Now, listen to me. Listen. Hart and Cassie are in love with each other. They are planning to spend their lives together. They will have a family at some point, and you... You have to start thinking about standing on your own two feet. No, Mother, Cassie is the one who's going to have to learn to stand on her own two feet because, and I know you're not going to believe me, but Hart is coming back to me. He really is. I feel it happening. I can see it happening. Dinah. No, no, no. I, I, I want you to know that this whole baby thing, maybe it started out with me just wanting to keep Hart. Somewhere along the line, my child went from being a bargaining chip to being the most important thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life, that could ever happen to me in my entire life. And nobody's more surprised about that than me. <laughs> Except Hart, I think. You know, he, he sees how different I am, and he, he looks at me differently. He's so respectful, and he's just so proud of me now. He's proud of me the way you're proud of me now. Of course I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you, but that has nothing to do with what I'm trying yes, to get it does. you to listen to. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, because it's because of the baby that you and I have this chance now to have a real mother-daughter relationship or something close to it. Right? And it's the same with Hart now. He sees, he sees me in a different light, and he sees that there's a little bit of hope there for us where there wasn't any before. I know that he does. Honey, I'm afraid that's wishful thinking on your no, part. No, Mother, you didn't see him in class tonight. You didn't see how involved he was. You didn't see how, how into it he was. I mean, he was everything a father should be. He's happy, and he's, he's, he's proud, and he's just, he's so involved in it. He is so into me and this baby that Cassie doesn't stand a chance. I'm telling you. Uh, I... I wouldn't count her out yet. I... Mother. I've never been one of those people who dreams about happy endings because most things don't work out for me and I'm pretty much used to that. But lately, I'm thinking that way because I really am on the brink of having everything that I could want everything I've ever wanted, so don't, don't take that away from me by being negative about this, okay? Because this is, this is it for me. I really feel like this is my last chance to have it all. And if you love me, then you'll want it for me. But I, I want you to want it because you see, too, that I've changed. And I'm really trying to deserve all of this happiness. I just, I just, I can't handle the thought of anything going wrong. Not now, not when, not when I'm so close. This time. Please, Mother. I just, just... Tell me that you believe that I can have this, that I can be happy. Disappointed, Cassie, okay? I'm disappointed, too. But this is life, you know? This is life. I mean, if it were a perfect world, it would be you and me and no one else, but it's not a perfect world, and I have responsibilities here. You know, you know, this this baby, it used to be some concept, some, some distant concept to me, but now, with the classes and the due date coming up, I'm telling you, I'm starting to get these feelings. Heart. I really needed to be alone with you, okay? I really have to talk to you about something that's really, really important. We can be alone. I mean, we have plenty of time to be alone. We can go away between the, the classes. It's not the same. It's not the same. Cassie, look at me. This is the best that I can do. Do you understand that? Now, I don't want to shortchange you, sweetheart. I don't. But I have got to do the right thing for this child. For all of us. Listen to me. Maybe I'm not good at juggling all these things right now, but I'm going to do this, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make the time to see you and the baby, and it's all going to be fine. But you got to understand me, sweetheart. You have a child. You know these kids come first. That's right. 
Good old Cassie, she has to understand. She has to understand. Put her feelings aside so everyone else can get what the hell they want, right? Cassie, Sorry. Don't Mark. go. Don't go away angry. I really want to be by myself right now. Time, Patty Mel, booth three, <laughs> Greek salad, booth two, oh and uh, stool, no, stool number two over there wants uh, coffee and uh, uh, blueberry pie. Okay, good. Well, aside from everybody's arteries hardening, what's going on? The president came in for French fries. What have you been doing? I mean, you're just getting changed? What have you been doing? When? What? Well, <laughs> do I have to ask, or are you going to tell me? I just some garbage to take care of, that's all. Nothing. <sighs> Okay. I guess I'll tell you something instead. Um, I'm glad you stood up for Jesse. You know, he's, he's wild, but, you know, I was too at that age. And, uh, oh, yeah. He has a good heart. Well, why don't we forget about Jesse? I want to hear about your wild side. <laughs> Are you feeling dizzy or woozy or anything? No, I'm fine. I'm going to go to the bathroom, check myself out, see how bad I really look, try to make myself a little presentable. I didn't mean to scare you. I was just looking for a quiet place to smoke. You know, you know how it is these days. You want one? No, thanks. You know, you yes. have the most beautiful face. It's just perfect. <laughs> Say hello to Jesse for me. Prosecuting a losing case, you know, Doris. There's not a shred of hard physical evidence that I raped Blake Marla. And you know why? Because it wasn't rape. Well, whatever it was, Blake's in a wheelchair. And you are hardly a poster boy for sympathy, Ben. I think it's a distinct possibility that you'll go down in flames. With the truth on my side? <clears throat> even though I'm innocent of all charges? Truth doesn't matter, only a conviction. You said that yourself when you were DA. You may or may not be guilty of raping Blake Marler. But one thing is for sure, you are rotten to the core and guilty of God knows how many other crimes. And I think it's a certain justice that you're getting nailed this time, don't you? If you're counting on Mrs. Marler to bail you out, your chances are slim to none. Mm. Oh, I'm glad you're home. I missed you. <laughs> I'm glad to be home, believe me. How did the deposition go? It didn't go very well for Ben, that's for sure. What do you mean? Well, his case is falling apart in chunks, and he tried that old trick of turning the tables on you, making the innocent look like uh, victims. Didn't work, and now he's sweating it out. I guess that's good for me. I mean, for, for us, right? But as usual, the wheels of justice are moving slowly, slowly, but eventually they're going to grind Ben Warren. And I can't wait for the moment when some judge's gavel is going to fall and he is pronounced guilty. You think that Ben is going to get out of this without having to serve jail time? No, no, not at all. The district attorney is going to ask for the maximum penalty. You're not going to see him for a long, long time. Ross, I... Boris. I have to... Tell you something. It's something I should have told you a long time ago. The truth about what happened with me and Ben that night. <laughs> 